Hi, Stamping Prince. It's Marilyn here with Stamping Creations with Marilyn. I'm so happy you could join me tonight. I am going to share a quick and easy card with you to help you use your designer paper because, as you're probably aware, we have a new catalog coming out here, effective June the 3rd, and it is going to be a lot more beautiful designer paper in it, and we're so excited to have it in our hands. We have it. We can share the outside of it with you, and I'm sorry I don't have it in front of me here to even share that, but I will in the next day or two do another Facebook Live and share that plus a few other things that I've been able to pre-order and get. But uh, just wanted to show you this card tonight, and I've asked you to bring along some supplies, so hopefully you can make it, and if not, this taped version of Facebook Live will be there for you to uh, refer to afterwards. So I will go over a couple things with you. I'm going to switch you to my camera where you can see what I'm doing and I have a couple other things to mention before we get started with the card making. So just bear with me while I try to remember how to do this. Yeah, it looks like it's working there. So as you can see, where my hands are here, I have a new hostess code that I would appreciate if you're ordering anything online to have delivered direct to you, which is a good thing to do now that we're staying home with COVID happening. And uh, I'd appreciate you using that hostess code. And also, if you follow me at all on Facebook or on my website, you will have seen that on Tuesday, we opened up registration for Stamping Staycation. So excited to be working with a couple of good friends of mine who are also demonstrators. And we are hosting this online June 13th. You can register here. You can see details about it on my website, on my Facebook page, my VIP page. <clears throat> and like I say, we're excited to be bringing this to you. So we are... <laughs> Sorry, pushed the wrong button there. Um, would like to ask you to share my video tonight, my Facebook Live video, when this is done. And I will put your name in a draw for a free registration to this stamping staycation. So, and that will go from now, any, any of my Facebook Lives that you can share between now and June 9th, and then I will draw then. And I will put your name in a draw for that. Um, unfortunately, you will have to let me know if you've shared it. Either send me a message or put a comment under the, the Facebook Live because I can't follow. Uh, sometimes, depending on your settings, I won't know if you've shared it. It'll say shared, but I won't know who shared it. So if you want to do that, that would be great. And uh, your friends and others are always welcome to, to join us on these evenings. So let's get started with our card. This is what I've designed for you. It is a card with your base layer and white inside to write on. It has a layer of white for a background. It has another layer of mint macaron, which I stamped on. And I realized tonight when I was getting ready that I asked you to bring another piece of white paper to stamp on and maybe punch it out and put it on there. So whatever you have in your stash. And then I have this white with one inch squares of designer paper on it. So to me, it's it's colorful. It's a good way to use designer paper again because Stampin' Up! does such an awesome job of color coordination. Their papers match their cardstock. And I just used the black ink on there, which is what I'm going to do again tonight. So I will leave that and I will show you the steps and the stamp set that I got those words from is the Good Morning Magnolia. So it has the huge magnolia flower, a leaf, hello, thanks. And then some sayings on the, the second set. It's one of those sets that comes in two, not only for what you do, but for being someone so special. Enjoy today. The journey of life is best shared with a friend. We'll get through this together. 
that's a good one for COVID time, and Thinking of You. So on my sample, I used the Thinking of You. It's a, a red rubber set. And the other, the designer paper I chose is from this package called Garden Lane, a number of green, it's probably easiest to pull this one out and show you, just all the different choices I had. And as you know, designer paper is double-sided, so you have that color and that color. So hopefully you've got some coordinating ones there that go with your cardstock. And the other thing that I did with mine, okay, so first of all, we'll fold our base. And I have discovered, totally by accident, I put my piercing mat underneath when I go to do my score on my burnishing with my bold folder gives it just enough cushion that it actually makes it lay flat a lot better. So I do keep my piercing mat beside me most of the time anyway. So that uh, was by accident, totally by accident, but it works really well. So for mine, I do have my pieces cut out and ready to use. I like to, when I'm doing a layer behind like this, this is all kind of wasted good cardstock. So I cut my square out of there. And you can either, you can cut it with your, your paper trimmer. It would work a little bit uh, scary, I guess, as to if you're going to cut too far or not. But what I used, because I happen to have them, put them in, the, in the camera so you can see them, I do have, these are layering square framelits. So there are, oh, heck of a bunch, 19 altogether. There are plain ones that you use with the Big Shot, and then there are scallop ones. And I, because I was using the one inch square designer paper, I wanted the biggest one possible, and I like the, the scalloped edge. So I laid that on the Big Shot, cut it out, and that way I'm not wasting that center, center piece of cardstock there. So I have this, I put my four squares on there. So you can go ahead and do that. And again, if you want to line them up on your grid paper, you've always got quarter in, or eighth inch, I guess they are lines on there. You can work with a ruler, whatever, to line them up. And oops, I've got red ink on me from somewhere today. So that will be done. And then, because you're going to cover it up, I'm going to put my adhesive on the white so that I don't have glue all back here when I'm, hmm, that's not going to work because I like gluing mine utterly. This I'll be careful. And make sure my adhesive is going to, uh, <laughs> there. Okay. Let me see mine. Like to have my silicone mat underneath, and then that way the glue doesn't stick to my grid paper. That I will be working on. So I can mount my mint macaron. Try and line it up as close as I can there. And I, I'm sorry if you're commenting on what's happening. I can't do three things at once, obviously. Or I would glue something in the wrong place. So I will answer all your questions later and comments. So please leave them. I love reading and seeing what you have to say. And if you shared something I normally do. Anybody that's come to classes and knows me knows that I stamp before I put anything together and I forgot this time. So I am going to stamp my 
thinking of you on here now, and hopefully it'll be straight. And ooh, it's kind of blobby there. So again, I'm trying to keep it in the camera so you can see. And You can tell if you look at my stamp that I have just re-inked that black stamp pad. So that's why I was a little hesitant as to should I even stamp off with it first, but looks like it turned out okay. And even though it's the red rubber, I know it's not one of the things they recommend all the time, but I usually have my stamping pad underneath it so that it that's a better, better under or under layer for the the uh, ink to go on. So then I, pardon me, just put my ribbon around, and it looks like it's a bow tie, but it's not. It's a faux bow. So I am going to uh, just put a bit of adhesive there and touch that down. Well, maybe I need to. Well, no. Come on. That's better. So then I will just use regular adhesive to attach that. I will use my liquid glue on that one. Liquid glue gives you great adherence, but it also, most of the time, gives you a little bit of what we call wiggle room up here when you're placing it. So, try and get that as straight as possible. And I like to turn my cards over and Rub them from behind like that so that I'm not in the ink anywhere. And I have my my ready square and hopefully my ribbon was in the right place. So that I would put on with dimensionals just to um, raise it up a bit. I think it looks a little better and these dimensionals, well any dimensionals, are still fine for, for putting it through the mail. If you uh, have trouble getting these papers off these double-sided ones, if you struggle with maybe not nails or nails that are too thick, if you push in the center, you can see how this pops up and it helps take them off. The other trick that some people have been saying is if you use your pick tool and I have never had good luck with that, to lift that. I am lucky enough to have usually fingernails that will work, so that's what I use. So hopefully, get them all, yep, looks like it. So then just decide which, which direction you want, if you want it this way or this way, and Touch it down. You don't have a lot of wiggle room with, with dimensionals like that. And then for the faux bow, as I call it, see if I've got that one up, the ribbon up a little bit higher than on the first one. I just cut another piece of ribbon and put it through like that and just tie it really tight. And then you can move it. If you want it on this end or that end or in the middle. And I will trim it. I have kept the scissors that we used to sell a few years ago and treat them as my ribbon scissors, thus the ribbon tying on them. So I will trim it there and there's your card. So I say quick and easy using your some of your designer paper. It's not a lot but it does take up some and then to coordinate with it, 
I like to add some designer paper to my envelope. And that for sure I would put on with, with liquid glue and my silicone mat so that keeps my work surface clean. So just glue around the edges and then you can line up. This one's not directional like some of them. If they were directional so that you, you had flowers growing or whatever, you would want it to be so that when it's closed, it's going the right direction. Or I would want it that way. You can do it however you want. So, so hopefully your cards are coming along. And I would love to have you post a picture of your finished product after you um, get it done. Nice to share, nice to see. what you're uh, working on and I have my paper snips here so then once I've adhered that to it I just go around and trim and you still have envelope adhesive so you can seal the envelope when you go to send it but find it um, I've been in a couple swaps recently with with other demonstrators from our team and we've been mailing cards because we can't get together and it's really really exciting to go to the mail and find here's an envelope and here's the matching card so it uh, just adds a bit and quite often we have or I have, I don't know about the rest of you, but I have lots of designer paper left usually at the end of the catalog. So my mission this year is to use it. So there's my card for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. I, uh, what else did I need to tell you? I would like, I'm going to switch you back here in a minute. So like I say, please, please share your, your designs. I would love to see them. And don't forget about our stamping staycation, your chance to win a free registration to it. That can be from anywhere in the world. We, um, we're going to be doing it on, on Facebook Live, so you could reach us. If you can't be there that day, you could certainly follow, go back and see the replay, and we'd love to have you join us. So I will switch you back. And thank you again quick and easy card. I'm hoping to be able to do these Tuesday night and Thursday night. Might switch it up to an afternoon somewhere along the line, but just watch my Facebook page for that if you would. And I would also like you to comment for me and let me know other things that you'd like to see. If you have any questions that I can answer for you, if I can't answer them, I'll find an answer somewhere for you. I have lots of support people that I can reach out to. So just let you know that I am here for you. I would love to craft with you and hopefully we'll see you next time. Thanks all.